What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. In this video, I wanna share a new offshore technique that I plan to add to my arsenal based on some data that I collected over the past few years. Let's get into it. Before we get into the video, I have an announcement to make. Fish the Moment is currently looking to hire a full-time video editor to help edit our Catch 15 series. This is our high quality on the water videos that include drone shots, cool graphical transitions, and on the water fish catches. We're looking for someone who has experience editing in Adobe Premiere Pro and using Adobe Photoshop. This job can be worked remotely so you don't have to move and we're offering a competitive salary. If you guys are interested in this opportunity or know anyone who'd be interested in video editing for Fish the Moment, you can email us at our email, info at fishthemoment.com. We'll send you over the entire job description along with the starting salary. So definitely email us if you're interested. Now let's get into the video. A few weeks back, I made a video analyzing all of my fish catches over the past two years. I put the data in charts and I found that I was catching a lot more three plus pound bass on baits that were targeting suspended bass. In the past when I did these analyses, I found that I was catching a lot more fish on traditional offshore baits like a football jig or a deep diving crankbait that were fished on the bottom. However, in the past two years since getting Garmin LiveScope, the football jig has not been as effective for me, though it still does catch fish. And instead, I'm catching more fish on baits like a hair jig, a Neko rig, or other baits to target suspended bass. The one challenge about fishing a bait like a hair jig or a Neko rig, though, is that they're not as weedless as I would like them to be. Therefore, if I'm fishing around sanding timber or brush piles or any other type of cover where I could easily get snagged, these baits are not going to be as effective. In that case, I would have to go back to my traditional deep diving crankbaits or football jigs. But again, these baits are not designed to target suspended bass. You can stroke a football jig off the bottom or work a deep diving crankbait a little bit shallower than it needs to go, but it's definitely not the ideal tool for targeting the suspended bass. So it got me thinking, is there another way that I can target these suspended bass around thicker cover that will allow me to be more efficient and also kind of lines up with my strengths, which is fishing a jig. And I do have one bait that I've had some success on over the years that I want to start experimenting with a lot more. And that is a heavy swim jig. This is the Megabass Uoze Swimmer Swim Jig. It has an underspin on the bottom, a shad shaped head, and a really nice longer shanked hook. It almost reminds me of an underspin with a skirt on it, but it does have a weed guard that helps protect it from getting hung up on everything that is down there on the bottom, around trees, brush piles, stuff like that. It's not the strongest weed guard in the world, which is actually a good thing when I'm reeling this bait through the water column suspended. If you have a really thick weed guard like I do on my Fish the Moment offshore jig, I find that when those fish eat that bait as it's swimming, I don't get a very good hookup ratio. But when it's actually on there on the bottom and they eat the entire thing and I set the hook, I get a great hookup ratio. That's kind of why I decided to go with this specific swim jig for this new technique. It has a little bit lighter weed guard, it has a very long shanked hook, and it also has a little bit lighter wire hook. The way I plan on fishing this swim jig is kind of a cross between your traditional swim bait that I would put on a jig head, like something like this right here, and a hair jig. The hair jig is a bait that I fish by letting it sink down to the bottom, reeling it five or six times really fast and letting it fall back down. This pops that jig up off the bottom, makes it fall down through those fish, and I repeat that process. Now I think I can do the exact same thing with this Uoze Swimmer Swim Jig as I do with the hair jig. I'm basically going to cast it around cover, burn it five or six times really fast to pop it up over the cover, let it sink for a little bit, maybe reel it at a steady pace to get it kind of going over the top of the tree, burn it, pause it, things like that, to try to generate a reaction strike, but trying to do it as close to cover as possible. This is definitely something that has been proven to be effective in the springtime of the year with your suspending jerk baits. If you guys have seen my videos recently about the Garmin LiveScope and jerk bait patterns, they're dominating pro fishing. A lot of guys are using 
their forward facing sonar and a jerk bait to put that jerk bait as close to brush piles and other types of cover as possible to get some really good bites. And this is really effective in the early times of the year when the water temperatures are cold because you can get that bait to basically suspend right next to that brush pile. But as the water temperatures warm up into the summer in the 70s and 80 degree range, those bass are much more aggressive and they're much more likely to chase after a bait if you bring it by their face really fast. That's why a hair jig is such an effective tool in the summertime. I think we can get the exact same reaction strike from a swim jig around brush piles and things like that and give fish a different look from what they're used to. A lot of guys will crank brush piles with a deep diving crankbait. They'll throw a football jig around them and it's a great way to catch some good fish, but I don't think as many guys are swimming a swim jig around those same offshore brush piles and standing timber and things like that. Now I've experimented with the swim jig in the past, and this is actually the three quarter ounce size of this Uoze Swimmer swim jig. I like that three quarter ounce size because it allows me to fish it deeper around those brush piles and work it pretty quick. However, I think that this three quarter ounce size might actually be too heavy in a lot of situations. That's why I recently invested in more of these swim jigs, and I have a half ounce size here, a quarter ounce size, and a 3 16 ounce size. I wanna walk through all these different sizes and explain why I would actually need all these different head sizes and how I plan on fishing them because I think that it could unlock a pretty interesting bite for me this summer. Let's start with the one I have tied on my fishing rod right now that I plan to use on my next fishing trip. This is the half ounce version of this bait in the IU color. I've experimented with a few different trailers and I'll show you all the trailers here that I plan to go with, but this one is the Six Cents Whale 4.5 swim bait. The reason I like this swim jig in particular with this swim bait is that it has a very universal color palette. You have some yellows in there and some greens that could imitate bluegill or perch. It has some whites in there along with that silver underspin blade that will help it imitate some shad. And then the actual swim bait itself has a mix of that kind of blue green color and a little bit more white that will allow it to imitate both the bluegill and the shad. Also the half ounce size is the most versatile, I feel like in my opinion, that allows me to fish up shallower in let's say six to seven feet of water offshore, all the way down to 15 to 20 feet if I work it a little bit slower. I feel like the versatility of this setup makes it ideal as I start to test this technique more often over the next few months. Again, I've caught some fish on the heavier three quarter ounce version of this bait, but I haven't really gone down to the lighter swim jigs or really thrown the swim jig offshore that much at all. So it's definitely going to be a great bait to experiment with. It'll be fun to try out a new technique. I don't do that as often as I probably should. And this is a little bit different video from normal because most of the time I'm showing you techniques that I have proven results with. This is more of an idea based on the data that I analyzed and just kind of looking through my strengths and weaknesses. I feel like this could be a really, really effective technique. I also invested some money into it, so I definitely want to make sure that I give it a good shot and hopefully it's something that will work for me. As far as my equipment with this jig right here, the half ounce size, I'm throwing it on a 7 foot 2 medium heavy action Denali Covert Light bait casting rod. Pairing that with 14 pound Sunline FC Sniper fluorocarbon with a 6.3 to 1 Abu Garcia Black Max reel. It's a $50 reel and pairs nicely with a little bit more expensive rod. This is a $179 rod and I like to go with a little bit more expensive rod in general guys because when I'm fishing a jig offshore, casting it far away from the boat, I want to really feel all those different strikes and also be able to differentiate brush from rocks and from fish and having a little bit nicer blank really does help with that, especially when you're jig fishing. But the reel, the reel just helps you reel the line in and I actually even tighten down my drag all the way on these black maxes so I don't use the drag. I just basically thumb the reel if I need to let line out and it really just helps me get more setups on the deck of the boat, spend less money on my reels, and more money on my rods. So that's my initial setup here, guys, and I'm planning on experimenting with this a lot as these fish get into the post-spawn period of the year, and even if there's some fish pre-spawn still, because it's kind of cold outside. Now, there are a few other sizes in this bait I plan to experiment with as well. This is actually the quarter ounce size of the swim jig, which is a lot lighter and smaller than that three quarter ounce size that I traditionally throw. 
My idea behind throwing this quarter ounce swim jig is to actually fish it offshore. You would think this light of a jig would be great for shallow water fishing, and I'm sure you can catch fish on this bait up shallow as well, but I plan on using this specifically on offshore cover. And my idea behind this quarter ounce size is that it's going to have a very a slow fall rate. So if I'm fishing it in four to six, maybe eight feet of water, that slower fall will keep it in the strike zone longer and it won't be digging down into the bottom. At the same time, as I'm reeling that thing slowly through the water, I can speed it up and burn it really fast, just like I do with the hair jig, but because it has a lot more uh, skirt material and also the fact that I put this big boot tail swim bait on the back, which is actually a Big Bite Baits 4.8 Pro uh, ribbed swim bait. It's kind of like a Kitek style swim bait. And I'm just throwing this because I have it in the right color for this black and blue jig. The idea with this bigger boot tail trailer is that it's going to drag more water, making the bait fall even slower. And unlike the hair jig, which I don't throw a trailer on and it's designed to fall very fast, this jig is going to fall very, very slow. Almost, I feel like, stay somewhat suspended in the water if I keep that rod tip pretty high. So the goal with this is to work it in that maybe four to eight foot range around offshore laydowns, offshore brush piles, stuff like that. Maybe even if there's some isolated stumps or something out in the middle of the lake, reel it by those stumps, maybe burn it and stop it, let it slowly sink by those areas. And I think that could be a really effective tool. This is definitely out of the norm for my offshore fishing. I've always tried to focus on baits like a crankbait or some other type of moving bait when I'm fishing in that four to eight foot range and I'm using reaction baits. Or if not, then I'm fishing really slow with like a 10 inch worm or a maybe a half ounce jig. By combining the moving bait approach with kind of the jig slower moving approach, I get a little bit different presentation that these fish might not be used to seeing. And I think it could be very, very effective. And in this specific setup, I have this jig in the black and blue color because I plan on fishing this in dirtier water. But I also have a quarter ounce size of this jig in a shad pattern and a bluegill pattern, depending on the type of forage I'm really focused on. I have three basic colors here that I've picked out, a bluegill color, a black and blue, and then this IU kind of shad imitating color. I want to experiment with all three colors to see which one is the most effective, and I have them in all three different sizes here as well. Half ounce, the quarter ounce, and also in the smallest size, this 3 16 ounce. Now this is a really interesting little bait. It's a lot smaller than the other two. It has a pretty small hook on it, so I'm not gonna be fishing this around super heavy cover, but by adding a Kitek 4.3 inch swim bait, like this right here, on the back of this 3 16 ounce jig, this bait is going to fall very slow. And if those fish are setting up, let's say around brim beds up shallow in the summertime, or maybe they're setting up on very shallow laydowns in the fall, I can work this jig offshore, kind of reeling it through, almost like fishing a spinner bait, and maybe getting some of those fish that are used to seeing an aggressive moving bait and tricking them with this really light, finesse swim jig. I could also fish this a lot deeper if I want a super slow approach. I can cast it out on maybe 10 pound test, reel it super slow around some brush piles and clear water, let it sink for like 20 seconds maybe, and just barely reel that thing, then burn it and stop it. And that could also be very effective as well. I think that experimenting with the weight of these swim jigs is going to be crucial in figuring out which setup is the most effective. And that's why I've pre-rigged a lot of these. I have a half ounce size here in the bluegill pattern with just this Jackal 3.8 rhythm wave swim bait. And then I also, again, have the 3 16 ounce size. I have the quarter ounce size here. I have another half ounce size rigged up in the IU color. And I will also have that three quarter ounce size ready to go if I need to fish, let's say 20 to 25 feet of water. This is giving me a lot of versatility with this bait. I plan on kind of throwing all of them on the exact same rod, that uh, seven foot two covert light rod, but I may have to go to a little bit lighter rod, different line, or a little bit heavier rod as I change to heavier swim jigs, lighter swim jigs, stuff like that. I'll keep experimenting and hopefully I'll be catching a bunch of fish on this and I can make a 
follow-up video on exactly what worked best for me across all these different scenarios. Again, this is something that is just based off of the data that I found in that video from a few weeks ago that I need to be fishing baits that are more targeted for suspended bass, but again, I need to find something that can get me closer to the cover. And I think that I may have found the ticket with this swim jig. Brian Thrift has won a couple of tournaments over the years on Lake Eufaula, actually using this exact technique in the summertime, a swim jig with the little blade underneath it. And I think that if I can unlock the key to this, it could be a really, really strong addition to my offshore fishing lineup. Hopefully this video was interesting to you guys. I don't have any data to back up if this works or not. This is more of an idea that I have in my head. Let me know in the comments if you enjoy me sharing my thought process on this stuff without actual fish catches to back it up. And I will hopefully be able to share if this works. And if it doesn't work, I'll also probably share that as well of why it wasn't working so you guys know in the future if this is a good technique for you. But again, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you left a like down below on the video. If this video could get to a thousand likes, it would really help me out. And other than that, guys, thanks for checking out this video. We'll see you all next one.